Hello there once again everyone. This video is going to be about trying to figure out some problems that I've been having with uh, live streaming video at LAX. As many of you guys probably know, if you've seen some of my previous posts that I've since removed from the channel, I've been having a lot of these problems with uh, video when I'm trying to stream live out there. Um, so sometimes I would get these random freezing of the video coming in from my video camera and you know I'm using the the Camlink 4K to input the video from the video camera into the computer. So these little flashes of black, you know, sometimes would occur like this. And that's not too bad because usually the video would come back, you know, but it's still kind of annoying, you know. And then sometimes I would actually get a little bit different, which would be like this one that's about to happen right now which would be a blackout and then it would look like it was going to freeze. The colors would get all scrambled, but then it would continue, you know. So I've been doing a lot of research and trying to find out, you know, what is causing this and what I could do to fix it. Um, and I, I came across a couple of solutions, which I've tried all of them. And I'm not sure yet if I solved the problem, but I think I did. Uh, but I'm going to go over everything that I found out you know, doing this research and trying different things. And I've gone out to the airport maybe three or four times in the last month trying to get this to work. And I've just about given up on it, even though I think it would be something cool to do every once in a while, you know. But so anyways, um, like I said, sometimes I would get these total blackouts like this and then I couldn't get the video back. I would have to go into the OBS and try to reset the, the feed, you know, and then sometimes it would freeze like this. And this is happening in real time right now. You know, I found out that it froze and then I would go in and fix it by resetting the, the properties of the video feed coming in. And then it would work again for a little while. But then as you'll notice here in a couple of seconds, it would freeze again. So this is, uh, it was very frustrating, you know, to say the least, you know, trying to figure out what was causing this. And like I said a little while ago, what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to figure out what it is that was causing all these problems and hope that the next time I go out there, you know, the solution is actually worked that I came across. Okay, so some of the solutions that I found online, um, they go from all the way from disabling power management in the device manager for the USB hubs in the laptop, turning off USB selective suspense setting in the power options, um, I've downloaded the Elgato 4K Capture Utility and I changed the USB transfer mode from bulk to asynchronous. Um, I also checked to see if there was a firmware update for the Camlink 4K, but there wasn't. Um, I tried streaming or, or inputting the signal at 1080p, uh, 60 frames per second, and also at 30 frames per second. And when that didn't work, I also tried reducing the resolution to 720p and also going down to 30 frames per second. That still didn't work. So then I bought a second HDMI mini adapter. I tried three different HDMI cables. I tried having the camera connected to AC power, not just on battery power. And I even tried using a different camera, you know, which uh, apparently was the last thing that seemed to make the difference for the last feed that actually lasted, you know, five hours. And I think it only froze twice during those five hours. But it wasn't really the camera that was that made the difference and that's what I'm going to reveal to you guys at the end what the solution I think finally is and you know I've done a lot of testing here at the house and during all this time you know I was using my phone as a hotspot here at my house when I was doing the testing and I'm also using the phone at the airport as a hotspot you know for doing a live streaming so that was you know the same thing and it didn't make a difference anyways so the first uh, possible solution was disabling power management in the USB. So for that, you can go to manage the PC. And then in the window that you get here, you need to go to device manager. You go down to the universal serial bus connectors. And right here, I only have two. So I have the USB hub 3.0 here and the USB 3.1. So basically you go to each one of these, you go to properties, you go to the power management tab and you make sure that this checkbox is not checked. And I had already unchecked them uh, a week ago. And today when I was uh, 
preparing myself to do this video, I found that this was already checked again. So I'm not sure what causes that to get checked, but so you go through all your USB hubs that your laptop or computer has and you check the same thing. Make sure that that allow the computer to turn off to save power is not checked. All right. So once that done, the second part is in the power options. So you go to your power options here. And I created a full power plan so that it could always be running at maximum CPU and everything. So, you know, I wouldn't be throttling because of that. So you go to change plan settings and then you go to advanced power settings. Okay, so the fifth item here, you gotta go to USB settings and then you'll see this USB selective suspend setting. You have to make sure that it's disabled both on battery and I'm plugged in. So it doesn't, you know, maybe suspend the USB ports while you're trying to do something with it, like input 1080p video. So make sure those are both disabled. All right, and that's the second solution. The third solution that I found was you have to download the Elgato 4K utility, which I had not used before until I started troubleshooting this. So you basically open up this utility and right now it's probably not gonna show any video because uh, OBS has control of it. But what you need to do is you need to hold down the control key and you press here on the little settings uh, preferences little thing and when you go to here um, you know this is where you select the, the video quality that you want to send over or capture uh, you go under device and you need to make sure that you change this from either bulk or automatic to asynchronous so that's the one mine was already selected on that so I didn't really have to do anything and I also did a uh, check for firmware but it told me that it was up to date so those two solutions didn't work there's also this other um thing that it says enable stream link which allows you to put an ndi source into L, um, obs um, but that still didn't work it was still doing exactly the same thing with or without this uh, stream capture utility so that was the third solution that i tried and um like i said you know then i tried doing the video i tried going from uh uh, 1080p 60 frames a second to 1080p 30 frames a second and that didn't work and then I tried to do uh, 720p at 60 frames per second and 30 frames per second and that didn't work okay so now I'm gonna try to show you some of the equipment that I've been using to try to get this done so I've been trying to use this camera which is my Canyon Vixia HF G50 which is a 4k camera it's a pretty good quality so this is actually the camera that I'm gonna be using to show you this next part alright so in order to get the video into the computer the laptop I'm trying to use this cam link 4k uh, adapter so basically it's an HDMI input adapter um, which allows you to put um, you know the, the HDMI input from a camcorder or a camera um, and even a video game directly into your computer so you can capture it so then when when my big camera didn't work I tried to use um, this little camera here uh, because I was having so many issues with the other one I said well let me just try another camera and see what happens and you know as you saw the people who saw that video I was able to record about five hours of streaming and the thing only froze on me twice so it ended up being pretty good so in order to get the video out of this one obviously this has a mini HDMI port so I ended up using an adapter like this one which goes from mini HDMI to the full size HDMI and this is the one that I had mentioned that I had bought a second one of which is actually this one and this is the one that ended up giving me problems so you connect that one in there and then you take your normal HDMI cable which uh, for the purposes of this demo I'll just say it was this one here and then you connect the HDMI into that but because I was having so many problems I actually ended up using you know a different cable altogether um, now when I was doing all my testing I actually even ended up using a very short HDMI cable just to rule out you know the possibility that it could have been the cable as well 
So I ended up just using this one at home to try it out. And when that didn't work, I actually went out and bought an entirely different HDMI cable, which seems to be a little bit better quality, you know, just to make sure that that wasn't the cause either, because I had heard on another video that that could have been a problem too, is if you get a very low quality HDMI cable. So trust me when I tell you I tried everything. And at the end of the day, one of the times when I noticed after I came back from the five hours of streaming, um, I actually was testing here at the house with this particular cable. And when I was playing around moving the camera, I noticed that when I, when I bent this cable in a certain direction, which is the one I was using that day to record, um, the signal will go black. And so I was like, well, wait a minute. So then I tried it again a couple of times, you know, and er sure enough, every time I moved it a certain way, it would go black. Uh, but remember, I was using the other, the one that I'm actually using on the camcorder right now. That's the one I was recording first, the first three times. So that one had also given me problems. And I haven't been able to find any good quality ones of these. Um, you know, every time you look on Amazon or whatever, it's like they're all no-name brands. So I just uh, make do with this one here. So anyway, um, I figured out a way to tie the cable up on my big camera um, with zip ties to secure it onto the, the grip part of the camera. And I'm thinking like that, it won't even move around at all. So I'm hoping that that, that solves the problem completely. Um, so I won't find out obviously until I go over there next time because every time I've done this, it works perfectly fine when I'm here at the house. But then as soon as I go out to the airport, it doesn't work anymore. So we'll see what happens. And one last little thing that I wanted to show you guys on this little video is that in an effort to improve my audio, I went out and bought myself um, one of these Yeti blackout microphones which apparently you know are very good quality microphones and so far from my initial testing it does seem to be the case it is um, I am extremely extremely pleased with the quality of the sound and right now I mean I even have it all the way down to um, zero gain and I only have the microphone input on Windows at 70 percent and I'm um, you know it's uh, the testing that I've done to me it shows that it's really good um, hopefully it doesn't pick up like right now my fan on my laptop is on and my refrigerator which is right next to me is on as well so hopefully it doesn't pick that up um, you know like I said I did all my testing and everything and I I think that these settings are gonna be pretty good quality um, so let's hope for the best okay so anyway i just wanted to uh, put this out there in case anybody has any, any thoughts about doing some kind of live streaming like that at you know events or whatever out in the field i mean i know there's thousands of videos you know out there explaining um all this how to do all this and much better than i can ever do but i just wanted to put out there what i've gone through the process i've went through and i'm really hoping that the next time i go to the airport to try to do a live stream i really do hope i sorted out the problems and it works perfectly. So thank you guys very much for watching as always, and I'll see you on the next one.